Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, I'm Dale Beaumont and welcome to Top Gun Sales Management. I'm with Wayne Berry and our topic of conversation today is where to find the best possible sales performers. That coming up in just a moment. Welcome back to Top Gun Sales Management. In today's presentation, we're gonna talk about where is the best place to find proven sales performers. And this whole series is about showing you how to find uh, great sales staff to exponentially grow your business. And we're with our special guest, expert trainer, Wayne Berry, one of the world's leading sales trainers with over 40 years of experience in as a salesperson and also as a sales manager as well. Wayne, welcome back, thanks for joining us. Very good, very exciting business. All right, now we're talking about, in this interview, about where the best place is to find top sales performers because mm -hmm. we've spoken about uh, a few other topics and we're gonna be talking about a few more after this, but this is mm -hmm. so important. Where where do we find these people? Now, before we get to that, mm. who are we actually looking for? Can you kind of give us a bit of an idea of the characteristics, the traits? So, uh, how mm. would you profile uh, a person that you're looking for that's going to become a top sales performer? <sighs> Look, you, you're really looking for somebody, somebody with the right attitude, somebody that is coachable, somebody that wants to learn, somebody that who sees joining you as a wonderful opportunity rather than a job. Um, you know, to attract good people first, you must be attractive. Um, insofar as it's not just the job, it's the things that go with it. So if you're offering an opportunity to uh, learn, grow, you're providing training, coaching, and the whole package, uh, that comes into the equation when you attract people. I always say a, a sales team will always be a reflection of the manager. Poor manager, poor sales team. Top Gun sales manager, top sales team. Why is that? Because um, if you have a turkey sales manager, I'm told I'm supposed to not stay stupid and turkey, but I, I am. Um, if you have a, have a sales manager who's a turkey, only turkeys will work for a, uh, uh, let me say, an unprofessional, unskilled sales manager. And the flip side is also true. If you've got a really top sales manager, they will attract good people. Good people work for good people. Uh, poorly skilled people will work for a poorly skilled manager because that's all they can get. That's the only job they can get. And uh, sadly, the, the poor sales manager will settle for that. So you're looking for somebody with the right attitude, somebody who's coachable, someone who sees it as an exciting opportunity to grow personally as well as the money they're making. Then they're coming to you with the right reasons. Let me ask you an important question. How do you test for attitude? How do you, it's, it's, not, it's like an intangible quality that's mm. not quite as measurable as, as uh, having, knowing how to use Microsoft Word or knowing how to use Photoshop. You can see that they've ticked that box. How do you know if someone's got a good attitude? Look, it comes out of conversation. It comes out of observing body language. It comes out of asking them, having conversation with them. And there's an there's a intricate sales uh, interview process that we teach to go through uh, in your interviewing process to test for attitude. But you really are looking for someone with the right attitude. And... Um, Again, you know, it, 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 it is in the way they view the world. You know, how, how are you going? Great, fantastic, versus somebody who says, oh, you know, getting by. Did you, s did you see what happened the other night with the football match we lost again? You know, people who are down in the mouth like that, um, they go work for your competitors, not for you. You, you, you get the people you deserve uh, and the people you're prepared to settle for. So, so only look for people with great attitude. I mean, why work with somebody who's got a bad attitude to start off with? There's plenty of them out there. In fact, there's more people out there with a bad attitude than a good attitude. But again, you'll attract someone with a good attitude if you yourself have a great attitude. How do you get to be have a great attitude? Often it's your own skills. If you're confident and you're skilled as a sales manager, you'll feel happy, confident, and you'll attract that kind of a person. So what are some other traits or characteristics that we're looking for with these people? Because before we can find them, we mm. need to know who we're finding. Look, uh, it's not even a matter of finding people who are necessarily experienced in sales. So, you know, I often say uh, good salespeople are found, and in fact, we've got a list a little later on, I think we're going to share with the, with the people here. But you'll find uh, people in often very strange places, you know, they're not necessarily in sales. 
Uh, one of the things I say is always be looking, always be on the, the lookout for good people because you'll spot them. You'll spot people with a great attitude, a service-oriented attitude. It could be somebody in a cafe that, that you, you go and see. I stopped in a, a shopping centre here in Sydney the other day, <coughs> just asked for directions with somebody, and, and the, the young lady behind the counter was just so down in the mouth, spoke at such a low level. It's like I would immediately, and you would immediately say, whoa, who hired her? She is in a service role, and she's behind the counter in one of these little stalls with a really bad attitude, she didn't want to be there. And uh, I, you know, in, in the same shopping center, I asked somebody else for directions, and he said, oh, yeah, it's just down here. come with me, I'll take you, and I'll show you. And he wasn't working there, but he, he just happened to be there, and he, he took me and showed me where to go. And it's like you pick people who's got, who've got a great attitude. Because if you've got a good attitude, um, they're teachable and coachable. If you've got a bad attitude, I'm sorry, but they're probably as good as ever gonna be. Uh, they had the wrong attitude. Now, should we be looking for just one person if we're trying to uh, to grow our business and we can't <coughs> do the selling anymore as the owner or entrepreneur? Do we hire just one? Do we hire two at the same time and train them both together because one might not work out? So who are we looking for? Look, there can be advantages certainly in starting two people at the same time. You've got the synergetic effect of them working together. You've got a competitiveness between them. You've got the camaraderie between them. Also, um, uh, it's, it's often less costly in, your, in terms of your time to be training two people at the same time. Um, so yeah, look, if you can find a couple of people, start them at the same time. Uh, our clients often do that. We, w we have ongoing relationships with our clients and we often say, look, you know, hire two or three, bring them in at the same time because when they're working together week after week after week on the training and the coaching and everything that's happening and everything the sales manager is doing, it's much better if they've got you know, other people to do role plays with and bounce ideas off. So yeah, th there's tremendous value in, in taking a couple of people on at the one time. I wouldn't necessarily have the attitude, I better take on two in case one doesn't work out. Because if you're good at hiring, you pick the right people in the first place. You won't have too many disasters. And our graduates uh, uh, of our Top Gun Business Academy who have done the sales management program had an extremely high strike rate with getting the right people in the first place, mm. very low staff turnover at all. And more importantly, people are literally lining up to work with them. There's a very well-known real estate um, man here in, in Sydney whose, whose name you would know. And uh, I mean, people are literally lining up to work for this guy because he's unconventional. He runs a very high-end real estate company. And it's very well-known. If you work for this guy, you make a lot of money. And it's very hard to get to work for this guy because he has very high standards. And that's the way you want to be seen in the marketplace. All right. Now, um, should you be looking for people that already have industry experience or do you think that's not as, uh, not as important as what you may think? It can be useful, but it may not be as important as you think. Because, if, again, people who come from within the industry often have blinkers on. They, they have certain... Um, Preconceived ideas. Yeah, yeah. They, they see it a certain way. You bring someone from outside the industry. I'll give you a really good example of this, and it's an example of me not being uh, good. I, I hired a guy many years ago when we were in the seminar business. I used to bring out a lot of the, the famous name American speakers, and uh, I set him up in Brisbane as a sales manager, initially as a salesperson, eventually became the branch manager. And I, darn it, I forgot to tell him that car dealers were a waste of time calling on to invite to come to see the American speakers. And sadly, he went out and he saw all the car dealers, and, and when I went to the Brisbane event, he had a whole bunch of car dealers there. How silly of me to not tell him not to call on car dealers. The point I'm, I'm making is he didn't have any preconceived ideas. He didn't realise car dealers weren't a good prospect. Similarly, if you're bringing people in from outside the industry, th they won't have the blinkers on that you don't call on that type of business, they're not a good prospect. Often, th they'll do something innovative and different and surprise you. And if you're going to be hiring, should you put the call out to your existing staff? <coughs> there might be someone that's mm. working as a, as a receptionist or yep. someone that's working in a technical role. Do you tell people, hey, I'm looking for a salesperson or, or should you just leave those people there and go outside? No, look, I think you're working day by day with these people. Um, you hopefully are close to them and you're recognising good talent. And again, you're looking for attitude. Is this a person who really wants to have an opportunity to grow, develop, and yeah, have, have a sales career. And again, I interview people in companies, my, my coaches and I, we do what's called selling skills competency assessments, uh, where we're interviewing a, a current sales team members. And I'll often say, hey, you know, uh, is there anyone else in your organization who's not in sales now, but could have the right attitude that you'd like us to interview? And very often uh, we do bring them into the training and they blitz the others. They do amazingly well because they had a good attitude and they, they were really, um, excited because they got this opportunity offered to them. So yeah, look within first, I think. And do they have to be a proven sales performer? Like do they have to have, you know, achieve certain goals or targets in, in, in other companies? Um, yeah. Or do you think if someone's had little to no sales experience mm. that uh, that's okay too? I think so, yeah. Look, um, achievement of any kind 
is a preview of coming attractions. By that I mean somebody could have achieved in some other area of their life um, nothing to do with sales, but they've got a track record of achievement in other areas of their life. You know, things that they've done that they've achieved. They could be an athlete, or <coughs> they exactly. They could have worked in the military. Exactly, and highly disciplined. Uh, one of our coaches falls into that category there, for example, and uh, uh, and he got into sales and was enormously successful in sales, sales management before he joined our team. But again, he, Robert is a really, really high achiever. So you look for high achievers with the right attitude, who want the opportunity because skills, selling skills, can be developed and developed quickly at the person is highly motivated and highly driven. So yeah, they don't necessarily need to have a track record in sales, but a track record in achievement is really important. And you give them the opportunity. So um, we've spoken about attitude. <coughs> what about uh, another word related to that passion? How, is mm. it, how important is it for someone to be uh, passionate? And do they need to be passionate about your product? Or do they, you know, if they can sell, they can sell anything? Well, the answer is yes, they need to be passionate about you, your product, your company, the opportunity, all of that stuff. Um, it's often said you can't sell anything to anyone else unless you can sell it to yourself. I mean, there's certain products and services I, I couldn't sell. I wouldn't be passionate about selling it. And, and so it is of you as well. So yeah, finding somebody who's passionately interested in, in what it is that you're selling is going to be a, a major step in the right direction. Yeah. And people that are, um, you know, you're looking for someone that is, is really strong and aggressive and, and kind <coughs> of motivated. You know, you're looking for someone that has some, some confidence, but obviously too much confidence can be a bad thing if they're self-centered or they're, um, you know, wh when, when can it become too much? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, again, that's a part of your selection process. I, if you pick somebody who's got the wrong attitude, because th that, that still comes down to wrong attitude. Mm. If somebody is self-centered, selfish, um, highly motivated, but you can see that they're going to be trouble. Uh, don't hire trouble. There's a category of salesperson that we call the hotshot prima donna. And the hotshot prima donna is, as the name suggests, they're really good and they know it and they tell everyone. They're not team players. They're very disruptive. They don't want to be a part of the team. They don't want to attend the meetings. They don't want to fill out the paperwork. They don't want to, they want to have a special car park. They want to have special reporting privileges. And they might produce great results, but they've got a really bad attitude and they come into your organisation and they can upset your staff, upset your business and put off the really good people who, who, who could be doing a great job for you. They're just really disruptive. So yeah, be really, really careful. Just because somebody is a high achiever doesn't mean they're necessarily going to fit the culture in your organisation. And what about someone that is, you know, hu just hungry, that really wants to produce results? Mm. Um, you know, how do you, how do you find those people that are, you know, trying to prove a point and want to become successful? Well, again, it comes down to you, your, your search and your interview process, where you bring those kind of motivations out. When you're asking the appropriate questions, to find out what really motivates this person. And uh, one of my friends and mentors, Jim Rowan, uh, spoke about the nitty gritty being often the biggest motivators in life. Find out what the nitty gritty is of this person that really motivates them. You see, we teach the how to's, but it's the why do's that are far, far more important. If you can find, as you said before, you know, they really want to show someone, they really want to show their, their father, you know, it's like they could be in their 40s, but they still want to show their father. Maybe he isn't even still with us, but you know, they have a point to make. They, they want to be successful. So yeah, you find people who've got that drive, that passion, uh, who've got the right why do's. And if you can show them how to achieve, um, how, how, to, how to achieve their goal. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.